Hi there. Welcome to today's Power BI Health Analytics Workshop organized by DubSec and Design Buddies. Today, we're going to be using Power BI to build a variety of different data visualizations to deliver insights to our journalists at the New York Times. As part of this, we'll be building a three-page report in which we'll be allowing them to go ahead and view the total active cases by country, the deaths versus recovered by country, as well as the total active cases by country for COVID-19. Now, before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Zotra. I've been teaching data visualization since the last five years, and I got started my career at the Indian School of Management and Entrepreneurship, where I began to teach Microsoft Power BI. After that, I've also gone ahead and taught for the University of Washington for Dubstech, as well as for the Information School at the University of Washington, Seattle. And most recently, I've been teaching on Zoom, where I've had the privilege of going into teaching for the Texas McComb School, which is at the University of Texas at Austin. And just last autumn in 2022, I organized a data visualization certification program in which more than 100 students learned Tableau as well as Power BI, and their overall response was extremely positive, and that's motivated me to record more such workshops like the one we are doing today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce you to Emma, who works for the New York Times and runs a podcast and writes a report on the state of COVID-19 across the world every week. So while people may assume that, you know, COVID-19 has ended, it actually has not, right? There's still active cases happening across the world, and Emma is covering just that. She wants to be tracking the total active cases, the recoveries, the deaths, and so on. And even how many people may have gotten tested, for example. Now, specifically, each week, she wants to investigate the data that's available out there on the COVID-19 pandemic. And she has three key questions she wants to answer. What are the total active cases by country? What are the total active cases, recovered cases and deaths in a specific country she may select? And then what are the total deaths versus total recovered for all countries in the world? And as part of this investigation, she basically discovered this data set available on this website called the Skagel. And this data set basically has all the columns of the data that she needs. And it's all available for free on Kegel. It's a great website to find free data sets and she's found it out here. But the problem is when she looks at a table like this, she cannot find the answers to her questions super easily. And that's why she's come to you, because she wants to visualize this data to gain the insights to her questions that she's been asking. So what we're going to do today is we build these interactive data visualizations, sure, that can answer the questions per se. Now, you're going to, have, going to go ahead and basically tell her that we're going to use Power BI to build this. And it's basically because of the fact that it's super great in terms of its capabilities. In fact, it's a market leader, as you can see, this 2022 Gartner Match Warden Fanatix Business Intelligence Report per se. Now, she's gone and said, go build it, I trust you, and you get right into it. But there's one thing you're going to go ahead and do before working in Power BI, which is you're going to get down to sketching. And why are you going to get down to sketching? Because drawing on paper takes maybe three to four minutes versus building something in Power BI may take something slightly longer per se, and you may build something that maybe Emma does not want. Hence, it's always important to always draw out what you're going to build in Power BI or any data visualization tool first on paper, get the approval of your key stakeholder, and then move forward. Because then you have feedback where they may ask you to make a few tweaks and so on. Now, in this case, for Emma's first question on what are the total active cases by country, you realize that she wants to compare the active cases for each country against each other. So basically, whenever you're comparing values, for categories or countries or names or products or whatever, a bar chart is a super appropriate chart to use. Why? Because you can easily compare the length of each bar against the other. For the next question, which is what is the total confirmed COVID-19 deaths versus recovered by country, the most appropriate chart to use is a scatter plot. Why are we using a scatter plot out here? Because the total deaths and the total recoveries are both numeric values. And when you want to explore the relationship between two numeric values for, let's say, a bunch of categories or maybe a bunch of countries, then a scatter chart is the most appropriate chart to use. So when you want to see the relationship between two, let's say, numeric values over, let's say, multiple categories or multiple countries or multiple products, a scatter chart is the most appropriate chart to use. And then for the third question, which is the country status checkup, is basically, we're going to basically tell Emma that she can go ahead and select a country and see the total active cases see the population, and then she can go ahead and see a donut chart on the right-hand side that highlights the total deaths, the total active cases, and the total recovered. So we're going to go ahead and now build this based on approval from Emma. We're going to assume that she liked our designs because we are amazing designers. But of course, she could give feedback and we could tweak it further. But in this case, we're going to assume that she liked it and she approved our design. 
Now, we're going to go ahead and build this in Power BI today. But before we go ahead and do that, I want you to take a look at the data and understand a little bit more. So let's take a look at the data. I'm on Kegel, which is where I've downloaded this data set from. And you can also view it in the description. I put a link to the Google Sheet. You just need to go ahead and download it. I'll tell you a little bit more about that very soon. But first, let's take a look at the data out here in Kegel. So what you'll see is each country is being given its own row. And inside of that row, we can see the total cases. So for example, for USA, we can see the total cases, the total deaths, the total recovered. We can also see the active cases. We can see the total people who have been tested. And we can also see the population. So this is all the information we have about each country. And we have a lot of countries inside of this list out here, okay? We have approximately, let's see, how many countries on us? We have data on 231 countries. So that's a lot of data which is available to Emma. I'm going to now build this, you know, build a nice data visualization for her to visualize this data in Power BI. So let's get started. So the first step you need to take is you need to download this data set. To download this data set, come to the Google Sheet link which I put in the chat or in the YouTube description. Once you've gone and done that, come go ahead and click on the file button in the top left hand corner. Once you click on file, then go ahead and select download and you're going to save this file onto your desktop or into your downloads as a CSV file, okay? That's also known as a comma separated values file. This is usually the most common format we use when we're going ahead and downloading data and using it to build reports. So I'm going to go ahead and select the CSV file. I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this Health Analytics with Power VI. I've gone ahead and saved this onto my computer. The next step I'm going to go ahead and take is I'm going to go to powerbi.com. And when you go to powerbi.com, it's basically going to go ahead and sign me in. Now, if you have not already set Power BI up for yourself, what I highly encourage you to do is go to the Power BI, like, you know, set up instructions that I've put in the link down below. Out here, you'll basically learn how to set up a Power BI account so that when you log in, you see the same home screen that I see, okay? So you can definitely go through these instructions. It should take you a maximum of three to four minutes to set, up, set it up. So you can pause the video here and even set up your Power BI if you need to. Now, once you come into Power BI, you set it up. What you need to do is you need to create a report. So the first step to create a report is you've got to come to the left sidebar and click on the plus button. And once you click on the plus button, what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to import your data in. Now, the first two options which are available out here are not appropriate because we want to import a CSV file in. We don't want to paste or manually enter data, nor do we want to pick a published data set. So what you need to do is you need to click on this blue link called try these options. And then what you got to go ahead and do is you got to select the CSV tile out here. Once you select the CSV tile, a pop-up will appear, which will ask you to upload your data. To upload your data, look at the bottom left corner of this pop-up, which says browse this device. Click on this button. And once you click on this button, go to your desktop or wherever you saved your file, and then just go ahead and select it. In this case, it's saved in a health analytics with Power BI folder on my desktop. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this file. You may have saved it somewhere else. So just go ahead and find that file and then select it. And then go ahead and hit enter or select open in the pop-up window. Once you've done that, your data set's going to import into Power BI. It takes maybe approximately maybe 10 seconds at maximum. And now what you'll see is a screen that says, this is your data set. You can go ahead and create the report or you can share this data set with someone else. Now, in this case, we want to make a report for Emma. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this big fat green button that says create a report. And then we're going to go ahead and select start from scratch. We are making a report for Emma from scratch. So go ahead and select start from scratch. And we are immediately inside of the interface of a report in, of Power BI. Now, the first step that you need to take is that you need to actually save your Power BI file. It's really important for you to get in the habit of saving your file always because Power BI is an online app. If you lose your internet, you lose all your progress if you're not actively saving your work. So let's get started by saving our file. Click on Control S or Command S on your computer. Control S for Windows, Command S for Mac. And once you've got, done that, just go ahead and give your report a name. I'm going to go ahead and call this COVID-19 report for Emma, New York Times. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on the save button. And immediately you'll see that your file has been saved, but the overall interface immediately got updated. You may have noticed two panels on the right have disappeared. Don't panic. Why has this happened? Basically, when you save your file for the first time in Microsoft Power BI, what it does is it removes you from the edit view and takes you into a reading view. What we want to do is we want to go back into the editing view. So to do this, come to the top bar, click on the edit button. 
If you don't see an edit button, don't panic. It's most likely going to be below these three dots in a longer menu. Okay, so don't panic if you don't see it initially. Click on the three dots and find it there. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on edit. And now I'm inside of my Power BI interface. I want to give you a quick tour of the interface so that you understand a little bit better. Right here in the central area, we have our canvas. This canvas is basically where we're going to design our pages. Then to the right, we have three panels. We have a filters panel, a visualizations panel, and a data panel. The filters panel is where we can apply filters to our visualizations as well as to our pages, as well as to our entire report. The visualizations panel is from where we go ahead and start to create our visualizations and from where we modify the data that goes into a specific data visualization, as well as the look of a data visualization is defined in this visualizations panel. And the last panel is our data panel. In our data panel, you'll basically see your table and all of the columns, also known as fields, present person, right? So we have our country field, our active cases field, our population field, the total cases, total deaths, total recovered, total tested, and so on. These are basically exactly the same columns that you saw in the Google Sheet from where you may have downloaded the data. Perfect. Now, let's go ahead and start off by answering question one of Emma, which is what are the total active cases by country? To do this, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to come to the top bar. I'm going to go ahead and select the text box icon. Once I click on it, I'm going to just go ahead and type in my text, which is active cases by country. I'm going to select this text. I'm going to give it a font size of 28. Perfect. Now, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to click on Control S Command S to save my work. I'm going to get you into this habit of saving your work. Now, once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and build our bar chart. What do we want to do in our bar chart? We basically want to go ahead and show the countries and the total active cases for each country so that we can compare the countries against each other. Basically, a bar chart is the most appropriate chart to use for this question per se. So come to the visualizations panel. And what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and click on the stacked bar chart icon. It's the first icon in the first column, first row. And immediately when you click on it, you will see a bit empty bar chart visualization added onto your sheet. Just go ahead and make it slightly larger as I have done and then keep it selected and come back to the visualizations panel. You will notice that your bar chart can accept data for a y-axis and x-axis, as well as a legend per se. Now what we want to do is we're going to get started by adding the country to the y-axis. So our countries are basically going to be on a y-axis, right? Each country name will be on the y-axis. So drag country and place it on top of your y-axis. Now you may not immediately see the country names, don't panic. This is because you've not added in data for your x-axis as of yet. So what are we going to do? We're going to drag active cases and we're going to go ahead and drop it on top of the x-axis. Now, immediately you'll see you have a bar chart in front of you. And what this bar chart does is it tells us that Japan has the most active cases. Now, what we want to go ahead and do after this is we want to go ahead and rename our x-axis title, which is sub of active cases. We just want to read as active cases. So come to your visualizations panel and just double click on sum of active cases and type in active cases instead instead of sum of active cases shorter the better now once you've done that you may want to also go ahead and add data labels to your bar chart because right now it's super difficult for you for example for you to know what is the total active cases in let's say vietnam mexico taiwan south korea you could only eyeball it maybe you're like oh it's zero point maybe three million or maybe it's zero point two million you're not sure right unless you hover over it so we'll add in data labels. So there's a label attached to each bar chart that tells us the total value of that bar. So keep your data visualization selected, come to the visualizations panel, click on the paintbrush icon, and then switch on your data labels. Now we know the total cases in each of these countries. It's explicitly present in front of us. Now what you want to go ahead and do once you've done this is you may want to highlight, you know, maybe one or two countries of interest. I'm going to go ahead and teach you how you could highlight this. So Usually, you know, when you're going ahead and like doing data journalism, especially, you may want to call out um, sometimes maybe a particular value or a set of values per se. In this case, let's assume that Emma wants us to go ahead and highlight any country that has active cases more than 1 million. And she wants us to actively, like, you know, um, actively highlight it in, let's say, orange color. So all countries which have cases less than 1 million should be blue. But all countries which have more than 1 million active cases should be orange. Let's say Emma has told us to do this, okay? Or it should maybe be, let's say, be uh, pink. Cool. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and select this bar chart. And then I want to come to my visualizations panel. 
and I want to select the bars option. Once you select the bars option, I then want you to go ahead and click on the FX button right here. Once you click on the FX button, what you're going to go ahead and do is we're going to set up a rule and the rules basically going to say that if the, go ahead and click on the first country drop down, say if the active cases, the sum of active cases, if it is greater than or equal to zero, I'll select number and less than or equal to 1 million. So I have to type in 1 million. So I'll type in 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million. Then it should be blue. Cool. I'll add another rule. So I'll click on the new rule button and I'll say if it is greater than or equal to 1 million. So now I'll again type in 1 million. So I'll type in 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million. So if it's greater than or equal to 1 million, and if it is less than or equal to, let's assume maybe a max, I'm going to go ahead and say it could be any, you know, big, big number. It should be, let's say, pink. I'll click on OK. And now what you'll see is that USA and Japan are highlighted because they have more than 1 million cases. Perfect. Now, what Emma has asked you to do is she said, you know, um, I want you to go ahead and add in two slicers that allow me to slice the data by population and active cases. So she maybe says that I only want to be sometimes to see a list of countries that, you know, satisfy a population or maybe a population has to be above maybe 20 million people or active cases has to be at least above, you know, um, 0.4 million for me to be interested in. So she wants slicers to go ahead and, you know, slice the data and just get to see a set of data that she's interested in. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these two slicers for her. To do this, come to the visualizations panel. And in the visualizations panel, I want you to look at the first column, fifth row. You'll see this funnel icon, click on it. Now, once you've gone ahead and done that, then what you want to do is keep your slicer selected, drag active cases and drop it in. Immediately, you'll see we get this nice slider, or like which is basically a slicer out here, that allows Emma to interact with the bar chart and only see the data that she's interested in. So she can now say only show me countries that have maybe active cases above 810,000 active cases. So the only four countries which satisfy that. Okay, so she can now interact with that slider to do that. Now, let's say she also wants to go ahead and add in another slicer to do this. We come to the visualizations panel. We come to the first column, fifth row, and we click on the final icon again. And now we're going to just drag population and paste it in so that now she can go ahead and say, only show me countries that maybe have a population above, let's say 20 million or 30 million or 40 million people and so on. Perfect. Go ahead and click on command S. And now you have built your first page that shows you the active cases by country. So come to the bottom bar, rename your page one to say active cases by country now the next thing you may want to go ahead and do is you may want to go ahead and create a new page to answer emma's second question which is what is the relationship between the total deaths and the total recovered for each country so let's create a new page come to the bottom bar click on the plus button and we're just going to type in total deaths versus recovered by country once i do that i'm going to come to the top right hand area i'm going to click on the text box icon i'm just going to type in deaths versus recovered by country and i'll increase the font size to 28 perfect awesome now to create my scatter chart to answer this question it's gonna be pretty simple so i'm going to come to my visualizations panel and I'm going to click on the scatter chart icon, which is in the third column, third row. Why am I going to build a scatter chart to answer this question? It's because I want to compare two numeric values across a set of countries. Okay. So it's the most appropriate chart to make because we investigate the relationship between the two. So keep your scatter chart visualization nice and big. Come to the visualizations panel. And what you want to do is you're going to get started by adding in a value or values per se. So what are our values? Our values are the dots in the scatter chart, which is basically one dot is one country. So I'm going to drag country, I'm going to place into my values. Perfect. Next, on my y-axis, let's say I want to represent my total deaths. 
I'll drag total deaths and I'll place it on top of my Y axis. And then I'll drag it recovered and I'll place it on top of my X axis. Awesome. Now what you'll see is we can see the relationship between deaths and recovered. And what we want to now do is we want to make this chart a little bit visually easier to explore and understand. So I'm going to make a few tweaks to it, starting by just renaming my X axis and my Y axis. Keep your chart selected, come to the visualizations panel, and I'm going to change some of total recovered to just say recovered, and we'll change some of total deaths to just say deaths. Perfect. Now the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and click on the paintbrush icon, and I'm going to click on the paintbrush icon so they can just switch on the label for each dot. Right now, I don't know which dot this is unless I hover over it, right? I don't know if this is USA or if I don't know what country this is until I hover over it. This is Brazil, for example. I don't know what country it is until I hover over it. But what if I want to add a label in? Here's how you do it. Click on the paintbrush icon in the visualizations panel and then switch on your category label. This allows us to see each country and now we know what the country is per se, right? Now, the next step you may also want to take is you may want to allow Emma to easily explore the scatter chart because there are lots of dots, you know, you'll see in the bottom uh, left quadrant as compared to the rest of the chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch on a zoom slider. So come to your visualizations panel, click on the paintbrush icon if you haven't already and switch on a zoom slider so that now she can zoom into the data and explore those dots whenever she wants to and see all the countries, let's say in the bottom left quadrant more easily. See how as she can like, you know, just zoom in further and further, how much more like valuable this is as compared to a scatter plot where she could not do that. So adding in zoom in slide, adding in zoom sliders can be super useful for her out here. Go ahead and click on control S command is to save your work. And we're going to now continue in building this chart even further. So we've gone ahead and we've built out this scatter chart for Emma, but what she may want us to go ahead and do for her is she may want us to go ahead and add in another slicer, like a population slicer. So let's go ahead and add in that, add that in for her per se. So I'm going to come to my visualizations panel. And I'll just go ahead and select the slicer icon in the first column, fifth row. And I'll just search for population in my data panel on the right hand side. And I'll just write population and place it into my field. Now I have a slicer that allows Emma to basically say only show me countries that maybe have a population above, let's say, maybe, uh, what? Um, maybe this is a bit too much. Maybe countries which have a population above maybe 105 million, around that range, or maybe above 94 million. So that way we only see countries related to her parameters that she set in. Now I'm just going to go ahead and reset this, but that's a very useful filter for someone like Emma. Now the next question Emma has is, what are the total active cases, recovered cases, and total deaths for a specific country? Okay, so she's going to give a country and then we got to give her that answer. So it's basically going to look super interesting out here, which is going to look like, like this specific chart, which you see in front of us. I'm going to be teaching you how to use this super, super cool feature of Power BI. So stick along with me. So let's go ahead and create a new sheet. And we're just going to call this our country status checker. So once I've gone ahead and given my page a name, I need to add in a text box. So to add in a text box, I'm going to come to my top right hand area, I'll click on the text box icon and I'm just going to type in country status checker and I'll give it a nice large font size of maybe let's say 32 and I'll make it nice and white. Once I've done this, I want the user to be able to select one country at a time. So I'm going to have to create a slicer for this. Okay. A slicer will allow a user to select one individual country at a time. So come to the visualizations panel look at the first column fifth row we're going to click on the slicer icon again and this time inside of my slicer i'm going to add in a country field so come to the data panel search for country and drag country into field what you'll see is we have this long list of countries we want to make this a drop down menu right we don't want to overwhelm the user with over 200 countries in this list so keep this slicer selected Come to the visualizations panel, click on the paintbrush icon. And once you do that, switch on the slicer setting. So go ahead and not switch it on. Open the slicer setting, my bad. Once you open it up, then change your style from vertical list to drop down. And go ahead and open up the selection option. We're going to say a user can only select one country at a time. So if a user selects Afghanistan, they only see data about Afghanistan. If a user selects, let's say, the United States of America, which is USA, 
which is right here. They only see data about USA, for example. Perfect. I've added in my drop down. Now what I want to go ahead and do is I want to make a donut chart that tells us a breakdown of total active cases, total recovered and the total deaths. So how will I make this donut? Come to the visualizations panel and just click on the donut chart icon. It's basically in the fifth column, third row. Now let's go to make this donut chart nice and big. Okay, maybe not too big as I've done. Maybe this much is fine. Now instead of my donut chart, I'm just going to go ahead and drag in my active cases. I'm going to add in my um, deaths. And I'm also going to go ahead and add in my total recovery. Perfect. We've now added all of this data. We're just going to rename some of active cases, total deaths and recovered. So that it's easier to read versus maybe some off, some off, some off. Just wanted to be active deaths recovered, right? So let's go ahead and rename some of active cases. I mean, let's say active cases. Sum of total deaths to just say deaths. And then total recovered to just say recovered. So much easier to read. Now, you may want to color code this slightly differently. If you want to color code this differently, go for it. So let's say we want to go ahead and make the total recovered blue. How would you do that? Keep your donut chart selected. Click on the pie chart. Uh, don't click on the pie chart, my bad. Click on the paintbrush uh, tool in the visualizations panel. And then go ahead and select slices. Once you select slices, Go ahead and make a recover dark blue, for example. Make your deaths, let's say, orange. And you can make active cases pink. Perfect. Awesome. Now we've gone ahead and we can basically, like, you've gone ahead and made a donut chart. And now we can select any country and the chart's going to get updated to tell us the story of that country. But there's one thing that we have not yet done, which is we want to go ahead and basically make an interactive title or a dynamic title per se where based on the country has selected the title also updates you take a look out here let's say if i select usa you see how the title updates to show me case data about usa i select algeria or Andorra. you see how the title again updates we want to go ahead and learn how to build that so what you want to go ahead and do is you want to come to your covid19 report and you want to come to the top right hand area and you want to insert a text box once you insert text box it we're going to basically go ahead and make it nice and wide out here. Once you do that, I want you to look at this entire toolbar, which is above your text box. What we're going to basically do is we're going to make this dynamic. So to make it dynamic, we need to add in values. So I'm going to click on the plus button out here to add a value in. I click on plus value. And we're basically going to say, it's going to ask you, how do you like to calculate this value? I'm going to say the first value should be my country. So I'll select country, which is my column out there. Once you've done that, it'll ask you to name your value. Just give it a name. I'm going to call it country and select save. So my first, you know, um, field is in or like my first part of my value is in, which is Afghanistan. Now I want to go ahead and type in something else. So I'll just click into my text box. I'm just going to then say Afghanistan has. And now I'll again click on the plus value button. And this time I want to go ahead and add in the active cases. So I'll search for active case. Perfect. And you'll see it shows you active cases as 14,575 at the decimal points. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and say there should be zero decimal points. So I'll just make the decimal points be zero. Perfect. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and name our value as active cases. Click on save. And now you'll see it says Afghanistan has 14,575. And I can just type in active cases. Okay. Now, what I may want to also go ahead and do is I may want to go ahead and make the number of active cases pink in color. Why am I making it pink? Because active cases is pink out here. So I may want to make the number pink just to create the correlation for the user. So I'll just go ahead and select the entire number. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a pink color. So let me do that again. I'll just select the entire number and make it pink. Perfect. Now I've written Afghanistan has 14,500 active cases. And I'm just going to now type in the text which says out of its population of and then I'm going to click on plus value. I'm just going to add in a new value which is our population and I'm going to say no decimal places. I'm going to go ahead and then name our value as population. I'll click on save and now we can see Afghanistan's population and its active cases. Now this is a dynamic title. I'm going to select all of the text in the dynamic title. I'm going to give it a nice one size of maybe 24. So it's nice and big. You can even make it, let's say, 
28 if you like. Perfect. And if you want, right at the end, I'm just going to add in the word people. I'm going to make everything like a font size of maybe 28. Awesome. There you go. You've added a dynamic title. You can place it in the center if you want to. Cool. Now, if you go ahead and select a country, maybe Angola, or whether it be, let's say, USA as well, or Libya, whichever country you select, you see how the title automatically updates. And so does the chart. Perfect. Awesome. We've now gone ahead and built all three, you know, dashboards that Emma really desired. What we now want to go ahead and do is we want to go ahead and deliver this report to Emma. Now, we can easily just go ahead and publish this report in Bar BI and give her a link to this per se. She can navigate to each page individually. But what I want to do today is I want to build a cover page for two key reasons. One, I want to make it super easy for Emma to navigate to any page that she desires. So when she comes in, she should be able to directly click on a button which says, take me to total active cases by country or dead sources recovered or the country status checker page. Now these buttons will make her navigation experience a lot better. And it is also a great opportunity for you to learn how to use buttons and how to create a create cover page in Power BI, which is what makes me super excited to teach you this um, feature per se. So let's go ahead and do this. Come to the bottom bar, click on the plus button. Once you click on the plus button, you're going to give this page name. I'm going to call this cover page. Drag your cover page, make it your first page out here. Awesome. Once you've gone ahead and completed that, then you want to go ahead and give your page, let's say your cover page, your background color. Maybe you want to make the background color black, for example. How will you do that? Come to the visualizations panel. Go ahead and click on the paintbrush icon and you'll select the canvas background option. We'll change our background to black. And when you change it to black, you'll be exhausted, it's not become black. That's because the transparency is set to 100%. Set your transparency to 0%. Boom. Your canvas background is now black. The next thing you want to go ahead and do is you want to add a title. It says COVID-19 Worldwide Report. How do you add a title? Come to the top right hand area. Click on the text box icon. And now you'll just type it. COVID-19 Worldwide Report. And you can make the font size a nice large font size of let's say 42. Perfect. But well, there's one key problem. If I click out of it, you see a text box is white in color. What if you want to go in and make your text box, you know, not have any background color and you want your text instead to be white? How would you do this? Stick along with me. Go ahead and first select all of your text inside of your COVID-19 worldwide report text box. Then go ahead and change the font color to white. You will not see any text initially. Don't panic. Then go ahead and select your text box if you have it already. Then come to the right area. You will see a format panel. The format panel, I'm going to go ahead and select properties. And if I'm not wrong, it's going to be other than properties or advanced options or somewhere out here. Give me a second. EB under effects. Select effects. My bad. And then go ahead and switch off the background. Perfect. Now click on control S or command S to save your work. The next feature I'm going to now teach you instead of Microsoft Power BI is a super useful feature known as buttons. What are buttons used for? They are used to basically allow a user to navigate between different pages in Power BI, right? So if I'm on the cover page, I want to navigate to another page, I would need a button to jump to it super quickly. So do you usually use it, you know, in table of contents? So when a user wants to go ahead and jump from one specific context to another context super quickly, they're super useful. So to make a button, come to the top right hand area. <laughs> Sorry. And then go ahead and click on the buttons icon. When you click on it, a menu will open up and it'll give you an option for a variety of different buttons you can add in. There's a left arrow button, there's a right arrow button, there's a reset button, back button, information button, and so on. What are these buttons? The left arrow button takes you to the previous page, right arrow takes you to the next page, reset will reset all the filters you may have applied on the page, and then help will go ahead and we allow you to ask questions, so will Q&A. And there's also, you know, a bookmark and, you know, information and whatnot. But today we're going to build a blank button. Select the blank button option and you'll see a blank button right here. Now we need to style our blank button. So keep it selected and come to the format option, the format panel. In the format panel, you want to open up the style section. And once you open up the style section, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and first add in a fill. So switch on the fill. That's going to give a background color to it. And we're going to go ahead and make our fill orange and make our fill transparency 0%, so it's a bright orange. Once you do that, go ahead and switch on the text for the button. And once you go ahead and switch on the text, expand the text section, 
I'm going to type in some text for a button, which is going to basically say active cases by country. That's our first button. So type with the text. Now the text is a little bit small and gray, so let's update the font size of the text. I'm going to go ahead and make it a font size of, let's say, 24. And I'll make my font color white. And I'll also align my text to the left. Perfect. You can then go ahead and add in some extra padding on the left-hand side. So it's right now four pixels. You can go ahead and make it 32 pixels, okay? Awesome. Now, we've gone ahead and we've styled a button, but we have not told Power BI that when a user goes and clicks on this button, it should take them to the active cases by country page. So how will you tell Power BI that it needs to do this? Keep your button selected, come to the format panel and switch on the action option. Once you switch on the action option, you're going to tell Power BI that when a user clicks on this button, the type should be page navigation and it should navigate us to the active cases by country page. Perfect. Now, we need to make two more buttons. I'm going to be a little bit of a cheat out here and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep my first button selected. I'm just going to do Control C or Command C and then just do Command V or Control V if you're Windows. And I've got my second button out here. Now I need to make two changes to it. I need to update the text and I also need to update which page, which page it links to. So keep your second button selected. Come to the format panel, open up style. In the text section, we're going to go ahead and type in total deaths versus recovered by country. Okay, are we going to see even say deaths versus recovered by country instead? Perfect. Now, We've built our like text with a new button, but we have to go ahead and update the link. Because right now, if we go ahead and use this button, it's going to link to the active cases by country. Even if it says that's re versus recovered by country, it's not going to link to the deaths versus by recovered or country page per se. So give this button selected, come to the action section in the format panel, and then you want to go ahead and change your destination from active cases by country to total deaths versus recovered by country. Perfect. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to just go ahead and make another duplicate of this button. So, Control C, Command C to copy it and then Command V or Control V to paste it. I'll paste this in. Perfect. And now, I'm just going to go ahead and again update the text. I'll come to the style section of the format panel. I'll update the text to say country, status checker. Then I'll close the style section. I'll open up the action section and I'll change my destination to say country, status checker per se. So that way, when a person clicks on this third button, it takes them to the country status checker page. Perfect. Now you can move your buttons more towards the center. You know, if you want to keep it like this, I'm just going to space them out a bit. Nice. Awesome. Now, click on Control S, Command S to save your work. And now we want to share this report with Emma. So let's go ahead and share it with Emma. Come to the top left hand corner and click on File and then go ahead and say publish to web. And when you click on publish to web, you want to go ahead and create an embed code and then select publish. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a public URL to your work. Now note that if you are maybe part of a specific academic system or maybe a part of a certain business organization which is using Power BI, this setting may be switched off that you cannot publish publicly publish your work. In that case, if you cannot publicly publish your report for Emma, you can go ahead and give her a PDF. In this case, the way you will go ahead and get, go ahead and give her a PDF is by simply coming to the file option in the top left hand corner, clicking on it, and then selecting export to PDF. And that will allow you to go ahead and export a PDF for Emma. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the public link that we published for her. If I go ahead and select active cases by country, it takes me to the active cases by country page. Let's go back to the cover page. If I select deaths versus recovered by country, it takes me to deaths versus recovered by country, which is perfect, exactly what she wants. And now I'll come back to my cover page. If I select country status checker, it takes me to the country status checker for now. Now this report is going to give Emma all the answers to questions that she had at the start of today when she was looking at this specific data set. So you've actually learned today how to build donut charts, you learn how to build bar charts, and you also learn how to go ahead and build these dynamic titles as well as you also learn how to make scatter charts and buttons and a great cover page instead of Microsoft Power BI. And last but not the least, you learn how to publish your work and share this public link with another person because you now have got this link, you know how to even share it with them, even if they're opening it up in a brand new browser per se. So I'm super excited to have taught you this tool. 
What I'm now going to recommend is a few next steps as to what you can do to further your Power BI knowledge. So, what are the next steps I recommend for you? First of all, share this report on LinkedIn so that your network knows about the projects that you've been recently working on, okay? There may be a data science mentor who may want to talk, reach out to you and talk to you and help you grow in your career. You also want to add this project to your portfolio and resume. You have a link to the project, so it's super easy to add it to your portfolio as well as to your resume. Send it to your friends, send it to your parents, and ask your own questions of this data set and build more charts. There's so many more questions you can answer, right? You can ask answer the question of, which country has had the most um, testing? Which country has had, um, let's say, the least testing? Or maybe you want to see the relationship between uh, the country's population as well as the total recovered cases. You can go in and ask whatever kinds of questions you want to ask. And you can also try playing with other data sets on Power BI. I'll put a link to some other data sets on, to Power BI as well in the description below. And also go ahead and continue learning on the Power BI learning website. They have a lot of great free resources. Now, in addition to that, if you want to learn more data visualization in general, I highly recommend watching our Retail Analytics Workshop, which we recently published on Power BI, as well as learning Tableau, which is a great data visualization tool similar to Power BI, but it has a few additional features, which I think will be super cool for you to learn. So I've gone and made a workshop called Analyzing Accidents in Seattle with Tableau, in which you learn the ins and outs of Tableau super easily. In addition to that, I also have some other Tableau workshops that you can watch. These are on Tableau GeoAnalytics as well as on Football Analytics. So that's what you can do to learn more data visualization. And if you enjoyed today's session, or if you have more questions regarding data viz, go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn. Even if you appreciate the workshop, feel free to connect with me. I'm more than happy to always connect with all of the students who watch these workshops. And last but not the least, do follow Dubsing on Instagram. This is where we post about all of our upcoming events, workshops, hackathons, as well as our talks. You can see we've posted about all of our upcoming events right here. And also do join the Dubsig Discord. This is a great way to interact with the community that's always discussing topics such as UX design, data science, as well as software engineering. And last but not least, I'd love to give a shout out to Design Buddies. They're the largest design community in the world with over 18,000 plus members. And they're actively talking about different topics, including design dashboards, as well as UX design. And it's a great place to find a mentor, as well as to just find another community of people who may share a similar interest or with respect to you, maybe other people are also interested in designing dashboards so you can meet them out here. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Do go ahead and tune in for our, like, you know, other workshops which we have. And if you have a question, comment down below or connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.